Well, it finally happened. After years of fixing telescopes, I finally broke one. I recently acquired a big tote collection of random telescope parts. Among these were uh, diagonals and eyepieces, but it also came with three complete telescopes. One of them, this one, was an old stellar view. Pretty much the first high quality refractor I'd ever had. I'm mainly a reflector guy, but this was my chance to try out a real refractor. I took a lot of time to clean it up and make it look good as new, and I even used it a few times. The moon I noticed was super sharp, but it did have a slight blue fringe around the edge of it, but I'll talk more about that later. These type of refractors have two lenses at the front. They're stacked like cookies, and they're kept with a proper spacing with these rings. Now, the whole idea is that these specially designed lenses are going to eliminate chromatic aberration, something that's plagued refractors for hundreds of years. Uh, that's where basically the light going through a lens uh, kind of breaks up into its constituent colors and then they don't quite focus properly on the other side. Um, this is very bad for telescopes and it's one of the driving forces behind why Isaac Newton designed his telescope with mirrors. So back to the tragedy. Uh, the telescope was pretty old and unfortunately it actually had a little bit of mold growing uh, what looked like uh, in between on these lenses in the gap that I couldn't get to. So my plan was to clean them. But you know, as they say, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So the normal procedure is to first remove the dew shield, which in this case, uh, it typically means unthreading this cylinder from the back mount. And then uh, this comes off the front and this you know, slides back. And that gives you access to the lens cell up front. And you pull the lens cell out uh, and then you can get better access to cleaning the lenses, um, especially removing the four set screws that hold these centered in the tube. Well, just like any great heist movie, the plan falls apart immediately. Uh, at first, I couldn't get the dew shield off. Uh, I couldn't get it unthreaded. Um, I guess this was just, it's really tight fit. Uh, you know, it's 23 years old, so who knows you know, what is uh, ultimately keeping that together. Uh, so instead, what I did was I came in through the front and I reached down there and I undid the threaded ring that's in here and I pulled the lenses out one by one and uh, I very carefully I used uh, rubber gloves and I used professional cleaning equipment and I got them to look super clean and awesome and I was ready to put them back in and it was when I was putting this one back in this was the first one to go in that I learned the importance of those four set screws that are in there uh, those are used to center it and when you drop this in, if it's going in in any crooked way and it hits those set screws, well, let me just do a dramatic reenactment for you. Yeah, so the lens is cracked and ruined, and the telescope is ruined, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I've fixed so many reflectors over the years, and this was going to be my first really nice refractor, uh, but that was not the case, unfortunately. So I'd like to share a couple of lessons. So if you have a stellar view telescope and you are thinking of cleaning the lenses, anything beyond, say, the, the very front lens, I would recommend that you call stellar view first. Uh, I did that actually after I broke it, and they were really, really helpful. Uh, they gave me a lot of background information. They said that this one is about 23 years old. It has kind of a clunky rack and pinion focuser, and the lenses uh, weren't quite perfected like they are today. Now, you may remember that when I used this to look at the moon, um, it had blue fringe around it. The modern-day stellar view telescopes, they've uh, completely eliminated that chromatic aberration. They are effectively perfect eliminating centuries of a problem that plagued refractor telescopes. Now, I know it sounds like they're a sponsor of this channel. They're not. Yet. Anyway, 
Lesson number two is possibly the most painful lesson. I've read that Stellarview actually offers a cleaning service for a very reasonable fee. Oof. But all is not lost. Uh, I've actually found a person on cloudy nights on the forums who has a very similar telescope and it's missing a lot of parts uh, that this one has. So we've made an arrangement and I'll be shipping this off to him uh, in the next day or two. So if there's any silver lining to this, it's that this telescope is going to continue living on in some way. You know, they say that good lessons cost money and great lessons cost more. Please like and subscribe. Clear skies, everybody.